Well, what makes a good name? I have a an acronym for what makes a good name. It's SMILE. And I also have an acronym for the flip side of that, which is SCRATCH. Yeah. Uh, so SMILE are the five qualities that make a name awesome. So it's suggestive. So you want a name that suggests something positive about your brand. You want your name to be memorable is the M in SMILE. The I stands for imagery. The L stands for legs. And that means it lends itself to a theme. And the E stands for emotional. You want your name to make an emotional connection. Welcome or welcome back to the Bombshell Business Podcast. I'm your host, Amber Hurdle. And today I have a guest that I literally just met yesterday and she's so wicked cool. You're going to love her. I was like, hey, can you be on the show tomorrow? We're recording. And she was totally cool about it. I think you're probably going to know her work. And then in this episode, you're going to get to know her. So let me tell you about our guest. Alexandra Watkins is brand name expert and author of the Inc. Top 10 marketing book. Hello, my name is awesome. How to create brand names that stick. She is the founder of Eat My Words, a naming firm that specializes in creating names that make people smile instead of scratch their heads. If you have enjoyed a Wendy's Baconator, you have literally eaten her words. Welcome to the show, Alexandra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Amber. Glad to be here. So as we were kibitzing yesterday, um, we're both branding nerds. And so um, we could talk about this all the time. And mm -hmm. I thought I was kind of niche with Employer Brand Central that, you know, we take branding and we really just synthesize it down into what does that mean? Branding from the inside out. Girl, you got me. You have beat <laughs> me. You have dialed it down to naming. How did that happen? Well, I started my career as an advertising copywriter. And every once in a while, I would get thrown a bone and get to name something. And I love naming, but I didn't realize that naming was actually a profession. And when I discovered that, I switched gears and decided to, pardon the pun, make a name for myself. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, okay. So just even breaking that down for our audience members, like you truly can do just about anything in business. Like that's just such a great example of that. Take us from like, oh, this is an industry, like this is a job that I can do. How do you get from there to naming the Baconator? Okay, well, when I discovered that naming was a profession, I realized it was part of branding and I was in advertising. And although those two fields are related, they don't really intersect. So I had to start really from scratch. I, I had the expertise of knowing how to brainstorm and being creative, but I didn't have the contacts. So I went on LinkedIn, which was relatively new at the time. This is about 20 years ago. And I just started reaching out to people and building. So I had a really cool office in San Francisco where I lived at the time. And I, I have always had a cool office my whole life. I, uh, <laughs> and I, my, my desk was a 1950s diner booth. And I had a really colorful loft and I had parking, so which is so rare in San Francisco. Okay. So I would find people on LinkedIn that I wanted to meet and reach out to them and invite them over for monkey tea, which was this tea that I got in China. And no one ever really, it, like the tea was supposedly picked by monkeys in the mountains of China. <laughs> but like, it was just like a fun invitation to get. So that's how I got to know people and where did I think the Baconator? So I did the Baconator as a freelancer and I did it. So I did it for another firm, Strategic Name Development. And I just started going on LinkedIn and finding naming firms and reaching out to them and offering my services as a freelancer. And that's how I really got into everywhere. That is just insane. I mean, like I, the Baconator is, and maybe I'm, I, now, so my audience knows most of everything about my life. Um, I actually got bit by a tick a couple years ago, a Lone Star tick that specifically poisons you and makes you allergic to all mammals. So I can't eat burgers, bacon, anything anymore. It will kill me, like literally kill me. I have an EpiPen. It's crazy. Um, but I do remember prior to that, like the Baconator is my jam. I mean, that is just like, it's just, 
I, I just love that you went from, oh, this is so cool to like a household namer. So was that like a victory that then gave you the confidence to start your own business? Or how did, how did you step away from like being more freelance and be like, oh no, I'm putting my stake in the ground. This is my jam. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why, because all of these branding firms and naming firms that I was working for were putting their good name on my great names and I wanted credit. Yeah. So I, I was like, I need to get direct clients. I had some direct clients, but I really realized I didn't want to just work for other people's firms. I wanted to have my own. Yeah. Um, so that was, that kind of coincided with eat my words starting. Yeah. But yeah, it was important to me that I was recognized for my work and not invisible behind the scenes. Yeah. Like the, the actual singer for everybody dance now, C CNC music factory, <laughs> it's not fun <laughs> for anybody. <laughs> So yeah, for, for you youngins listening, that was a nineties reference <laughs> for us <laughs> older folks on, on the episode. Um, so, okay. I am not the best. I don't believe at, I think I could probably creative name some things and you know about velvet machete and, and like that, but like, I, I do struggle in that, like naming a podcast episode or naming a title and then like a business is even harder. So what makes a good name? Where do you begin with that? Well, what makes a good name? I have a an acronym for what makes a good name. It's SMILE. And I also have an acronym for the flip side of that, which is SCRATCH. Yeah. So SMILE are the five qualities that make a name awesome. So it's suggestive. So you want a name that suggests something positive about your brand. You want your name to be memorable is the M in SMILE. The I stands for imagery. The L stands for legs, and that means it lends itself to a theme. And the E stands for emotional. You want your name to make an emotional connection. And we talked about some names yesterday. And do you want me to go over yes, some please. of those? Okay, great. For sure. So um, I know a lot of your listeners are in the hospitality industry. So we can talk about some smile names there. We uh, years ago worked with a hotel in San Francisco called the Hotel Vitali. And it was a hipster hotel and they wanted more wedding business and they were competing with the W and the W had cool names for their wedding services. Like their post wedding brunch was called the morning after. <laughs> so they said, we want names. Our names are really boring and descriptive. So here's what we did for them. And anybody can do this. This is, this is just, we all, most of us have services that we sell um, packages. So just keep your mind open when you hear these and think about what you could do for yourself. So the post wedding brunch became bloody married <laughs> and the post reception bar rental became last call for alcohol. <laughs> I'm loving these. I mean, they're just, Thank you. they make Thank you want to be a part of it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't cut you off. I'm just getting excited again. Yeah, no, the rehearsal dinner. It's funny. We had a rehearsal dinner here in our backyard the other day for 70 people and the rehearsal dinner and we it didn't have a name, but the one that we named for the hotel Vitali was called meet the parents. And that's exactly what this was. The bride and groom's parents were here and it was all about meeting the parents. So meet the parents. And then there was a co-ed shower for a hotel Vitali that we named shower together. And then the hotel had, as every hotel has a, a group rate when you're booking, you know, rooms for a wedding party or reunion or whatever. And you usually just ask for the group rate, but we thought we could elevate that. And because they were so hip, we, we named it the entourage rate. I love that. It just, Thank it just you. takes everything to a different level. And, you know, obviously you need to know your customer, but you know, you clearly did. And who's going to respond to group rate versus the entourage. Like everybody wants yeah. to have an entourage, right? Yeah, like, you want to be a part of yeah. it. Yeah. You want to ask for the entourage rate. So um all they did was change the names in a binder that, you know, the bride and groom would go through, you know, identifying all the services they wanted. And just by changing the names in a binder, their sales went up by 25%. What's in a name? Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And a good Money. way for, for everybody to think about it, if you can't relate to that one, is imagine being in a restaurant and you see 
chicken soup on the menu. Now think about seeing grandma's chicken soup on the menu. It could be the exact same soup, but grandma, just that one word is so loaded with imagery and positivity and good, warm, warm, fuzzy feelings. So that's the difference that a name can make. Just a word can make. Yeah. yeah. Um, my favorite PR professor, Dr. Marcy Hinton, who I'm still friends with to this day, in college said, Amber, you love words too much. And she loves words. She's a wordsmith, but she's like, you love words too much. You need to let it go. You need to just ship it. Like you've got deadlines. You need to just ship it. And I'm like, that's not the right word. That's not the word that I want to use to describe what this is. Like, it's not hitting me yet. I'm going to just let it sit there for a second. And when the word comes, I'm going to put it down. So, but I think, you know, when I'm talking about branding, the, the, the way that I've always done it is, Everybody is branding different ways. My way is always to create emotional connection. And so when I hear your names and then I get excited or I feel edgy or I feel a part of something like your words, they really do matter. So what if I'm, so we have the smile, but what if I'm, okay, you and I are Mavericks. Let me back up a second. For those of mm -hmm. you who aren't familiar, um, I'll have to look back on the predictive index episode that I did, but one of the assessments that I offer is a predictive index. Well, Alexandra, to no surprise, is a maverick like me. So we're basically not unhinged, but we kind of just live in our own little world. <laughs> Sometimes there's collateral damage. It's fine. We clean it up. But um, we're rule breakers. We're we're not the standard thinkers. I mean, if you think what a maverick is, it's like we're we're taking a left when everybody else is taking a right. So if you're not like that and you're starting a business or you're launching a product and you're a very linear thinker, you, you like to be in the box, you like to color, you know, according to the numbers, how do you tap into this and get something like this? Well, I think a, a lot of people just, I, I ask people all the time, how are you coming up with names? And they're like, just in my own head, but why, there's no reason to just limit it to what's in your head because our knowledge base is so small compared to what's available online. So how I always start my brainstorming is online looking at different websites. So for instance, a picture says a thousand words, so you can use metaphors. So you can um, look at, so if you were naming something that's fast, you could look up metaphors for fast. Uh, you could go to a stock photo website and just type in the word fast or Google images and type in the word fast. And you're going to see pictures of things that are fast and that will help inspire you. Another thing you can do uh, today, today I was working on a moniker for someone, this guy named Frank Favaro. And his grandfather was in the mafia and he is, he's a customer service coach and a business person. And he needed, he wanted a, a moniker, just something that would elevate his own personal brand. So uh, we branded him Frank. Cause he, I said, what do you do? And he goes, I go in and fix companies. I'm like, you're Frank, the fixer, Frank, the fixer of Favaro. And uh, we did a little tagline for him. I make your problems disappear or I make your problems go away. And so like that's, and then we looked up, oh, we looked up a mafia, mafia lingo. <laughs> yeah. And so that's something I would do. I would look up lingo, right? So so, yeah. And so I would, so I'm Sicilian. I'm like fourth generation United States. Um, and as a child, I was like, my childhood dream was to become a mafia princess. I didn't know about all the bad stuff. It just looked really glamorous. So I was in for that. So that brand would totally speak to me. <laughs> yeah, but it's fun though, right? And yeah. people like to have fun. And and Frank was writing to me today and he said, thank you. Or I said, thank you. And and I said, your response should be forget about it. You yeah. Know? So like, yeah. So that's, and people like that, you know, business people have a sense of humor because we're the same people we are when, when we get, when we're not in work mode, right. We're the yeah. same people. We still have a sense of humor that doesn't go away and people like to smile. And it's like you said, when you can, people want to feel clued in, not clueless. And like, yeah. when you can relate to something, then you're, then you feel like you're part of it. Like you said. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's like, it's like you build little communities around things where people understand where they plug in and that they fit in and that these are the ideas that I like too. And, and it just, it kind of separates you from other things. And I'm not the best community builder with my audiences in terms of like, 
you know, creating a Facebook page and we're all in there talking and stuff like that because we're all too busy. Like my audience, that's not for them, but the bombshell brand took a life of its own. I mean, it was just a whole, like the, the bombshells are out there. They see other bombshells. They support those bombshells. They give away my book. They tell them to listen to the podcast. There is a community out there, but it's like this lifestyle more than a Facebook group. You know, it's, it's, um, I, I guess what I'm saying is, if you're listening and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to like build this whole thing. You don't have to like a simple name can unite people, which is. Oh yeah. And bombshell is a great name, but you can also like, it, like I'm going to do a promo code for you for my online course. So anybody that wants to get it can save $700 and get it for $199. Oh my God. And your promo code is going to be bombshell. Like that's just like, that's just a natural, like that's an easy one. So that's the thing that you can do when you have a name that lends itself to wordplay or that just cool people like that i mean it's like if you can have a name that lends itself to a theme you can have it be you know you can have a theme song you know uh there's a a woman she's a pr professional her name's lynette hoy her name said nothing about her company or what she did so we rebranded her fire talker pr with the tagline hot on the press and her theme song is fire by the Ohio players. So when she does a speaking engagement, she has that song blasting before she comes on stage and it gets the audience pumped up. Yeah, I love it. It's so good. It's so good. And it is, it's like an energy thing. Words yeah. carry such meaning to them and getting the right ones really, really shifts things now. And then, so another question, or maybe conversation piece rather is, there are some stick in the muds and as a brander, I want, I want people to look at my brand or any of the brands that I work with. And I want them to be like, hell yes, or hell no. Like, I don't want any lukewarm. Like if you're lukewarm, then you go find something that's mediocre and you go work with that company. But I want it to be like, oh my gosh, you are the solution or not for me at all. So talk me through, like, if you do create one of these, I don't even want to use the word zany because they're not all zany, but a more creative name and it turns people off. Like, what's your take on that? That's it's actually, you know, it's funny you said that because we, we Frank and I talked about that today because he's like, well, you know, some clients, they don't want to be fixed. I'm like, then you don't want them as clients. Like if they don't think there's anything to fix, why do you want to pull teeth? Like just that's good. Like let Frank the fixer, let that turn people off that don't have, don't think they have anything for you to fix. But the people that do have something to fix, your name will attract. And that's what a name can do for you. We uh, we rebranded a law firm. It was uh, a woman named Layla Benajamali, and she knew her last name was really hard for people to spell, pronounce, and remember. So she didn't want to name her firm after herself. And she worked with a lot of startups and did a lot of foundational documents. So we rebranded her Bedrock. And with Bedrock, she said that they started attracting the type of clients that they wanted to work with. Yeah. And that's what a name can do. You know, we named a nail salon in San Francisco hand job and that name isn't for everyone, but the people that it's for love it. They buy the t-shirts, they buy the underwear, they make appointments and that's what a name does. It's okay. If your name is a little polarizing. Yeah. I, and you know, and, and some of us are just inherently more irreverent, like, that's listen, if you put anything 90s gangster rap out there, I am in. I am in. Mm -hmm. I'm in. There are no questions. Sign me up. How much does it cost? I'm there because that's like such a part of my upbringing. I, I didn't mention this yesterday. I know you're in San Diego and have been in San Francisco, but I was actually raised in Orange County, California in the 90s. So, and then moved to Tennessee, um, 80s and 90s, and then moved to Tennessee. And, you know, there's just certain cultural things surfer language, things like that, that like light me up because it's a part of my fabric of who I am. And isn't that what we're trying to connect with when we're branding? Yeah. Yeah. And you, you want to be careful that you don't alienate your audience, that your joke is, or your kind of reference is to insider. Right. Um, we, a couple of years ago, we rebranded a vertical farming company that was calling themselves C Jane farm. And people of a certain age are familiar with the Dick and Jane yeah. books from elementary school. And so they got it like see Jane run, but the people that didn't get it really didn't get it. <laughs> so they needed a name that 
transcended age and was more global too. And so we rebranded them plenty. And that's a name that works for everybody. Yeah, I like that. And it's a feel yeah. good. I was just interviewing um, my friend, Ashley Ching, who owns In Haven. And, and this is a brand that is a procurement solution for anything that a, a vacation rental would need linens, whatever at a, mm. at a high quality, but you know, it's like hotel quality, but for a vacation rental and that industry is super fragmented and there's not a lot of standards and everything. So she's trying to solve for that so that there's quality things that are going to last, but the Inhaven name, like the first time I ever saw her, I just gravitated to it. Cause it felt like home. It's mm-hmm. like, I know this is professional and I know that you guys are, are procurement experts and, but I feel like even in their booth, just seeing the name and feeling the warmth around what this means just felt like I want to be a part of this and we've become friends and like, I love cheering her on and it started with the name. Yeah. 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 The name can be the soul of your business. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about smile. What's scratch? Scratch is when to scratch it off the list because it will make people scratch their head. And you need to be really judicious here. We have a free test on our website where you can take the smile and scratch us. And I see the results when people self-evaluate their names. And pe- <laughs> yesterday there was the name Henry the 26th and it was spelled H-E-N-R-I. And then 26 was in Roman numerals, which was like, I had to Nobody look it knows up. What, that like, what is this? And she said that it was easy to spell and pronounce. And I'm like, it's, and I wrote her back and I'm like, you know, from my perspective, it's not people don't know, like Henry, they're, they're going to want to spell with a Y and the, they're not going to know how to pronounce all those letters or yeah. So be judicious. So scratch stands for spelling challenge is the S. So if your name looks like a typo or if people would, would butcher the spelling, like Henry with an I scratch it off the list. Uh, the C is copycat. Nobody likes a copycat and you don't want to be known as one. And you know, why, why be somebody else when you can be yourself? So, and I know, I know that your, your listeners can appreciate that because they, I'm sure as bombshells, they all have really strong, unique personalities. Yes. So yeah, don't be a copycat. And the, um, the R in scratch stands for restrictive and that's where your name limits you. And you outgrow it down the road. You know, uh, I was in the 99 cent store the other day and they have stuff for $1.29 or, you know, $2.99 or, and then, you know, Dollar Dollar Tree is $1.25, but somehow that doesn't bother me as much because they don't lock it into a price at a dollar. It's not $1 tree, it's just dollar tree. Right. (laughs) Um, But yeah, 24 hour fitness is not 20 or yeah, is not 24 hours in every location anymore. So when you're naming your company, look into your crystal ball and really consider, will this name fit me down the road? Because your name will last forever. You know, it's like your logo, you can update that. Your tagline you can change that anytime. But your name is the longest lasting investment and the investment that will get used more than any other investment you make in your business. So, so yeah, be, be careful. Don't, when you come up with it, you don't want it to be restrictive and, or annoying is the A. And that is when you do something cute, like use Roman numerals, spell your name backwards or have a a number in the middle of it. Anything that's going to frustrate and annoy customers is going to repel them. So you want your name to be more like a welcome mat then a do not enter sign. Oh, so good. <laughs> um, let's see. S C R A T stands for tame. And that's when your name is just really flat and descriptive and you can't afford to be a wallflower. You have to stand out. And I know your bombshells are, your bombshells are brave. And like, this is a chance, step into your braveness and be brave and do something daring. Like Frank the Fixer, right? That's a brave thing to do, but he's daring. doing it. And then the, let's see what usually S C R A T C the second C stands for curse of knowledge and curse of knowledge oh. is where, you know, what your name means, but you have the curse of knowledge and other people don't know. So that could be a name that's 
in a foreign language and you forget not everybody knows look at sur la table right people pronounce it sur la table all the time because they don't they don't know it looks like sur la table so yeah. um and yeah people struggle with anything foreign so be really careful there and then one that i really liked was in san francisco there was a mexican restaurant named oaxaca and oaxaca is spelled like o x a C A something crazy like that, but they spelled it phonetically W H A K A, I think. But it, it, people knew how to pronounce it W A Oaxaca. Whatever you get it, you get the point. Yeah. And yeah. then um, the H in scratch is hard to pronounce, which would be Oaxaca spelled the regular way. Or you know, I mean, you just hurt really my brain just walking me through <laughs> it. You know what I mean? It's just like, come on. But people are like, I can't do that. But you can't, you can. I mean, we do it every day. The One of my favorites is we named a GPS for dogs retriever. I saw that on your website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the robotic vacuum Neato. Like those are names that pass the smile and scratch test. Yeah, for sure. And it's, I think for me, especially when you're Googling, like, and, and you're talking about SEO and like, how is this going to work? And, you know, anything promotional, when I think about it, like, how is this brand now going to live out in the world and attract market share? It's frustrating when it's too academic, too um, cutesy, too, like there's, um, I won't say it because I love them to death, but there is a, a business in Nashville that I did business with for years and years and years. And literally throughout all those years, when I went to just like try to find where I needed to log in real quick, you know, typically you could type it in and your history pops up, but because they were combining letters in the word and like, I was trying to remember where that went and how, or was it at the end or whatever years, mm -hmm. years I did this and it was frustrating. So every experience with that brand began with frustration. So I hear yeah. what you're saying and I love them. I would have never quit, but it was frustrating every single time. Is that what, is that the experience you want to have? Like, mm, exactly. Yeah. You want to eliminate the hurdles. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back to names, like talk about SEO, you get a divorce, but you're still Amber Hurdle because that's who, <laughs> that's who won the awards. That's who wrote the book. That's <laughs> who's AmberHurdle.com. Like it <laughs> is what it is. So we're, we're hyphenating a little bit. Maybe we can make a transition one day, <laughs> but um, good Lord. Names matter. People think about names that you're taking on your business and your personal life. So at this stage, and I mean, you've named a lot of stuff. And of course, you're, you know, we we definitely at, at the end, we'll talk about where to find you online and they can stock your website. But what what was like, what makes your favorite kind of brand to work on over the years? Like, what is there a, a common theme where you're like, yeah. oh, this is my sweet spot? Yeah, well, I love naming food and beverage because that's just fun. But I think any anything tangible that I can hold in my hand that's a product versus technology it's always mm -hmm. going to be more fun or something like, like with the hotel Vitali service names, like any opportunity that I or my team have to be clever. Um, that's what we love. I mean, those are always going to be more fun for us. Yeah. Um, how much work have you done in new Orleans? None. I feel like you belong there. <laughs> oh, thank you. I've been there, but I, I don't think I've ever had a client there. Huh? We're gonna have to figure that out because they're just, new Orleans is just such a, open to anything kind of city, like cleverness abounds. There's such a merging of all different kinds of cultures. To me, it's like the closest that you're going to get to Europe without going to Europe. So it's like, you've got that, but then you also have all these kind of weird wonky things. And anyways, I just, for some reason, it just came to mind. I'm like, you can name everything in that town because they would love it. They would just love your cleverness. Okay. So before we get to our final question, which is more of a general piece of advice, what kind of advice would you give for someone who's already named their business? What could they do to creatively try some of your strategies underneath the umbrella of what they have already created and maybe feel stuck with, or maybe just don't have the funds or the time to do a total rebrand? How can they use your creativity and the smile method in their businesses? Um, you could come up with a moniker for yourself. Like you have the velvet machete, which I love. So a moniker, and it doesn't cost you anything to come up with one. Mm -hmm. You could name your wireless network something fun and your guest password. If you have a guest network, name that something fun. I mean, any any touch points you have with customers, if somebody comes by, uh, have a fun guest password. Uh, name your office. Uh, 
Lynette, uh, fire talker, she, or come up with a title. She calls herself the fire chief and she works in the firehouse. Yeah. Come up with a theme song. Yeah. I love it. So even in my, my house before my divorce, um, we were kind of the hub all of my son's friends were there. We had anywhere from five teenagers to 30 teenagers who knew when and who would be there. And then we hosted a lot of nonprofit things and we hosted a lot of dinners and, you know, some kind of formal things. Um, but I named my house and you could check into it on Facebook and everyone referred to it as such, including like our parents, everybody, like if you went to our house, this is what people refer to it. Now, remember I'm a nineties gangster rap girl. So I might love me some Snoop Doggy Dog. Um, and so we named it the Hurdle Hizzle. And so <laughs> people would post things online, whether, you know, anywhere online. And they'd be like, oh, it was another great party at the Hurdle Hizzle. And it was like, it just brought people together. It was like, it wasn't our home and you're on our space. It was like this thing that belonged to everybody. And, um, and it was expressive of you know, just a, a piece of me and a piece of who I am. And it kind of just made things a little more lighthearted. And, um, you know, when you said like, name your office, I was like, oh, I guess I named my house and this house is Chiron's Cove. Um, so maybe I do name a little bit. <laughs> I like themes. I like, you know, my, my nephew calls me Zia, not aunt Amber. It's Zia. That's Italian for aunt. I wanted, oh, I like that. I wanted I like him that. to call me something that was different. I'm, I'm one of six. I wanted to be the favorite aunt or uncle. <laughs> so <laughs> I gave myself a name. More fun to say. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And yeah, in San Francisco, the office was called Candyland. Oh, so, <laughs> my yeah, favorite so you, game. <laughs> also, but, yeah, have fun. Have fun. People are so, there's no need to, like, even with your email signature, like sometimes I sign mine chow for now, C-H-O-W, like uh, food, ch like chow hall. Yeah. People like to smile. People like to feel good. And, you know, we all get so serious about work sometimes and mm -hmm. having a little fun can, can break things up and make people remember you. Yeah. And, and make people want to work with you. And that's, that's, we all know people work with people hire the people they want to work with. Yeah. And, and I wouldn't be afraid, you know, obviously you have to know your customer and you have to understand who you're trying to attract. And so you don't want to go too crazy if it's, you know, sometimes people will ask me things and, and I'm like, well, I, I don't know who you're trying to target, but like, I wouldn't want to do business with a company that has that logo or that name. Like that's, you know, not offensive, but it just doesn't make me feel good. But if that's your customer and they love that, great. I know that I'm outside of the box as a maverick. And I know that I'm going to be a little more playful and I want things to be a little more fun. And if that turns you off, good. Like, I don't want to do business with you anyways, because we're going to have fun. This is the vibe all the time. So if you can't get past the business name, we're in trouble. So you good, good for you. Not for me. You go do you I'll do me. And then like, you go find somebody that's a fit for you. And, and I think that's truly the, the benefit of branding. So have you found anything where somebody named something and it went super wrong? Um, I wouldn't say super wrong, but where, yeah, there was a voiceover. She's a very known voiceover artist in New York named Debbie Irwin. And she's actually the voice of the Statue of Liberty. If you go on the tour there, oh, wow. the audio tour, if you do the audio tour. And uh, so we rebranded, I rebranded her. Debbie does voiceovers and that, that's my era. So one of the original porn movies was called Debbie does Dallas. So Debbie, Debbie does, does Dallas. voiceovers. And she used it for like a year and she's like, you know what? Like I just, the guys just gave me so much shit about it. So she went back to Debbie Irwin voiceovers. Yeah. But she, she tried, she played with it. Yeah. Right? So yeah. And, yeah. Um, okay. So we know what to do. We want to smile. We know what not to do. We scratch things that don't fit the formula. Um, we're going to take chances. We're going to be creative. We're going to find inspiration online and in everything around us. And we're going to stay true to who we are and what we offer and who our customers are. Is there is there anything in that recap that I'm missing that is important to the naming process? No, you got it. Okay. So before we get into all the different places people can find you online, I would love to ask, I'm, I'm just super, I've actually been thinking about this since yesterday. I'm like, I wonder what her answer to this question is going to be. What final parting piece of advice doesn't have to do with branding. It doesn't have to do with naming. It doesn't have to do with anything we talked about or it can. What final piece of advice would you give a bombshell who's listening right now? 
be fearless. That, that's what I, that's, I've always been fearless and it's, it's not always comfortable, but you got, I know you've heard this before, but like step out of your comfort zone and, and you know, that it applies to names it applies to just life in general. And it applies to just following your goal, your dreams, right? Like people still can't believe that I, I, I did this. I just said, I'm just going to name things. And people told me you can't just name things, but, but I, but I have. Yeah. And it's so crazy. As I was telling you yesterday, I knew about you probably a decade ago. I mean, it had to have been a decade ago because, um, I was working with a marketing, I was actually coaching a marketing startup firm and I was coaching all the executives and somehow you got brought up and then I looked you up and I was like, Oh my gosh, she's amazing. And like, I didn't even know that you can be a professional namer. Like I didn't know that I was a thing either. Um, and I thought, Whoa, what a hard job. Like that's a lot of pressure. It's like, one thing that like so much rests upon and, and, you know, that's, that's a big deal. So I was a fan of yours. And then when we got introduced, I was like, this is crazy. What a small little world we live in. So I'm going to share you with my audience. So we definitely want to um, go find the chief executive boss lady of eat my words. You can go to um, eatmywords.com and then also on Twitter. For some reason, I can't log into Twitter right now. Like it's weird. I've been on Twitter forever. Um, so I'll have to find you there a little bit later. Um, when eat I my word. at, at eat my words, eat my words. Okay. And then um, Facebook is eat my words names. And then mm-hmm. on LinkedIn, you're um, Alexandra Watkins. And mm-hmm. as you know, bombshell, I say this every single episode, please go connect on LinkedIn, follow her because you know, that's where we do business and, and you'll get a lot more out of that than being distracted by everything else that's happening on Facebook or wherever else. So, um, and then we will also put in the show notes, um, you can reach, um, Alexandra, Alexandra, eat my and then we'll also put in the show notes the um, link to get the free name evaluation test and then the free mini master class. And then we'll go ahead and put um, your promo code bombshell to get a discount off of your, tell me what that is again. Oh, it's my online course, 36 yeah, on- lessons, step-by-step on how to create a brand name with buzz. That's insane that you're going to give it at that price. That's really, really <laughs> generous <laughs> of you. And I I thank you because that's... um bombshells have big ideas. And one of the things that I try to help, um, inspire them to overcome is that it's okay to invest in themselves. Oh, you have to invest, you have to invest in yourself. You have to spend money to make money. That is for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've been around the block a couple of times. Um, and so have I, and I high five you on that one because it's just what it is. So, um, you know, it's, and it, it has to be an investment though. Like make sure you're going to get a return on it. And, and naming your brand is probably one of the most important pieces uh, of the whole process is making sure that that is memorable and, and people can find you easily. So, um, anything else you want to add before we bid our listeners farewell? No, that's it. Okay. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. You're such a delight. And I'm oh, my so happy you're my world. Thank you. All right, Bombshell. You can tell why yesterday I was like, okay, in 24 hours, you want to be on the show? <laughs> Isn't she awesome? It's just, it's so fun. Everything about this episode was fun. And, and really at the end of the day, y'all, I mean, especially after going through a pandemic together globally, like, can we just all agree that we need to have a little more fun and levity in our lives? And and that looks differently for every person, but I encourage you to go to the show notes, amberhurdle.com forward slash pod Cass with an S at the end, you'll find her episode. You can find all the links to find her online and also make sure that you um, take her course. I'm going to take her course and, um, and I know I'm going to be better for it. I'm going to be better for my customers and I'm going to be better for my team and myself. And I'm going to invest in me because I know that there's going to be a return on that investment. Um, and you know, if you, if you want to take a second, the, the best way that you can support this show and fellow bombshells is by simply leaving a rating and review. And what that does is it just lets Apple know that more people need to put their eyeballs on this. And so they'll put it in front of the right people who need to listen to this show. And then we can expand the reach of what it means to be a bombshell, a bold, brave, unwaveringly confident woman in business. And that's exactly who you are. And that's exactly who you're going to be in this week and until the next episode. And I will see you there.